Okay, we're going to continue with the next section, section 4.2, uh, dimensional motion with two dimensional motion with constant acceleration. And I realized now that I never even went to the last slide that showed the answer from the previous, uh, previous lecture that you, when you consider the following controls, the gas pedal, the brake, and the steering wheel, all three controls cause an acceleration of the car. Okay, uh, now let's go on with two-dimensional motion with constant acceleration. You consider two-dimensional motion with constant acceleration. Consider the particle located in the xy plane at position xy as in the figure. The point can be specified by the position vector r in unit vector form, which is r equals xi um, plus yj. Uh, okay, X, Y, and R change with time as the particle moves. Uh, the unit vectors I and J remain constant. Remember, they are remember they're unit vectors. Okay, um, imagine an air hockey puck moving in a straight line along a perfectly level friction-free free surface of an air hockey table. Figure A shows the motion diagram from overhead point from the overhead point of view. Uh, imagine a puff of air directed towards the puck in the y direction. This force has no component in the x direction and causes no acceleration in the x direction in the x direction, but it does cause momentary acceleration in the y direction. This puff of air will just uh, move this. You know? When the force is removed, the puck has constant y component of velocity, and the velocity component in the x direction is unchanged. Uh, so, motion in two dimensions can be modeled as two independent motions in each of the two perpendicular directions associated with the x axis and the y axis. And, any influence in the y direction does not affect motion in the x direction and vice versa. They're independent. Uh, and we're going to use that to our advantage when we discuss projectile motion. Uh, okay. If position vector of the particle is known, um, then the velocity of the particle is... Um, the the velocity is dr dt so it's dx dt i plus dy dt j uh, which equals uh, vx uh, velocity in the x direction times the unit vector plus velocity in the y direction times the j unit vector um, okay the, we model the particle as we model a particle as a particle under constant acceleration independently in each of the two directions. We apply the equations of kinemat kinematics separately to x and y components of the velocity vector. Substituting, we get F Vx final equals Vxi plus Axt and Vy final equals Vy initial plus Ayt. We've seen these uh, equations before. They're just separated in vertical and horizontal components. Um, now, uh, we can rewrite this. Uh, we can rewrite this in, uh, since it's V final. It, V final is equal to Vx plus Axt times I and Vyi plus Aytj equals Vxi, Vxi I vector plus Vyi J vector times the Axi plus Ayj times T. It's really the same, same equation. It's just grouped. Uh, with the velocity components and the acceleration components in the parentheses. Now, if we can rewrite it as V final equals V initial plus AT in vector form for constant acceleration. Because um, you'll see that the 
VXI plus VYIJ uh, is the vector portion and AXI plus AYJ is the accel acceleration portion and the T is just a, a uh, uh, it's just a scalar, okay? Uh, all right, let's uh, continue on. So the X and Y coordinates of a particle under a constant acceleration are given by this equation. X final equals X initial plus VXI T plus one half AX T squared and Y final equals yi plus vyit plus one half ayt squared. You've seen these before. Now in vector form, it gets a little complicated. Um, we've got uh, those same equations, the, the one with the x in the x direction times i vector, and the ones in the y direction times j vector. So we can group the uh, the um, position portion, that's the X and the Y, X, I, X initial I plus Y initial J plus VXI initial I plus VY initial J times T plus one half acceleration X I plus acceleration Y J times T squared. It's the same equation you've seen in the past. It's only written in vector notation. Okay, and if, so we, if we rewrite that, it's R final, R vector final equals R vector initial plus the velocity vector initial times T plus one half, the acceleration vector times T squared for constant A. It's the same equation you've seen in the, in the past, but it's only in vector notation. Uh, we're going up to 16, okay, so we're still going. Okay, now the equation is mathematical representation, representation of two-dimensional version of the particle under constant acceleration model is shown here. Um, the graphical representation is in the figure. The components of the position and velocity vectors are also illustrated. So it's the same equations, V final equals V initial plus A acceleration times T and R final equals R initial plus V I T plus one half A T squared. You can see the in the graph in the the red is velocity and the black is position. Uh, so you can see the V initial V final and uh, you can see the V initial with the the V initial vector with the acceleration times time vector added to it gives you V final. And then in the, the one with the black vectors, you see the position initial times the uh, V times time, the v, v initial times time, that's another vector. And the plus the one half AT squared, that's another vector. All of those result, give you the resultant of R final. So, so there's a graphical representation of what's happening. Um, let's look at an example. All right, a particle moves in the xy plane starting from the origin at t equals zero with initial velocity having an x component of 20 meters per second and a y component of 15 meters per second. The particle experiences, in the, experiences an acceleration in the x direction given by ax equals 4.0 meters per second squared. Determine the total velocity vector at any later time. So if we conceptualize this, the components of the initial velocity tell us that the particle starts by moving toward the right and downward. Uh, no, downward because of the minus 15 meters per second. Uh, the x component of velocity starts at 20 meters per second and increases by 4 meters per second every second. The y component of the velocity never changes. Uh, it never changes from in its initial value of 15 meters, minus 15 meters per second. We can sketch a motion of the diagram uh, of the situation. And there it is. You can see that the, um, you know, the, there's a change. Um, the 15 meters per second is constant, but the the uh, x 
is changing. Um, because the particle is accelerating in the x direction, its velocity component in this direction increases, and the path curves as shown in the diagram. Notice that the spacing between the successive images increases as time goes on because the speed is increasing. Uh, the placement of the purple acceleration and red velocity vectors in the figure helps us further conceptualize the situation. Now we can categorize this as follows. Because the initial velocity has components in both the x and y directions, we categorize this problem as one involving a particle moving in two dimensions. Because the particle only has an x component of acceleration, we model it as a particle under constant acceleration in the x direction and a particle under constant velocity in the y direction. Um, now to analyze this, we begin uh, we begin we, by setting VXI equal to 20 meters per second and VYI equal to minus 15 meters per second. AX is equal to 4.0 meters per second squared and AY equals zero. So that's these, uh, these parameters are shown here. Okay, uh, write the equation for the velocity vector. V final equals V initial plus AT. So we have VXI plus AXT times I vector plus VYI plus AYT times J vector. Uh, you substitute the numerical values that are shown as the parameters up at the top, and we get uh, 20 plus 4. Um, that should be 4 meters. I think that should be four meters per second squared. Uh, it's a mistake on the on the uh, on the publisher's part. Um, so it's twenty plus four uh, times t i plus minus fifteen plus zero t j. And if you um, solve that, it just becomes twenty plus four t i minus fifteen j. Okay, um, so we finalize. We notice that this expression, we notice from this expression that the x component of velocity increases in time while the y component remains constant. This result is consistent with our prediction. So as t, as t increases, we're going to keep adding the 4.0 um, meters per second squared uh, for uh, meters per second. It's going to increase the velocity. Um, the initial velocity of 20 meters per second by 4 meters per second every second that it ticks off. Okay, uh, let's look at another example, a motion in a plane. Calculate the velocity and speed of the particle at t equals 5 seconds and the angle the velocity vector makes with the x-axis. Okay, this is a continuation of the previous problem. So we evaluate the result at five seconds um, and we have it here uh, 20 plus 40, 4 times 5 is another 20 so we have uh, 40i minus 15j meters per second. Um, now to determine the angle what do we do? We take the arc tangent uh, or the tangent inverse if you'd rather use that tangent inverse of the vy final over the uh, v, vx final. So this is the tangent inverse of minus 15 meters per second over 40 meters per second. Uh, and we get 21 degrees. So if we evaluate the speed of the particle, uh, we get the magnitude, which is absolute value of um, v final vector. So it's uh, vx final squared plus vy final squared, and it's 40 squared plus a minus 15 squared, and of course that's going to, the minus 15 is, it's gonna become positive because the minus times a minus is a positive, and you end up with 43 meters per second, um, as shown here, that's what, okay. Now the negative sign for the angle theta indicates that the velocity vector is directed at an angle of 21 degrees below the positive x axis. Notice that if we calculate vi from the x and y components of v initial vector, we find that v final is greater than v initial. Is that consistent with our prediction? Yes, it is.
Okay, now, determine the x and y coordinates of the particle at any time t in its position vector at this time. So we use the equation for the position vector, r final equals r initial plus v initial times t plus one half at squared. And we break it up into components, we get uh, rx initial plus vx i t plus one half a x t squared, all of that times the uh, i unit vector, and you get uh, that those uh, should those should be y's uh, r y i plus v y i t plus one half a y t squared j. Um, okay. Um, we substitute the numerical values and get r final equals 20 plus 2t squared i minus 15tj um, when we simplify. Uh, let us now consider a limiting case for very large values of t. You know, what if we wait a very long time and then observe the motion of the particle? How would we describe the motion of the particle for large values of time? Um, we, when we look at the figure, we see that the path of the particle curving toward the x-axis, um, there's no reason to assume the tendency will change, which suggests that the path will become more and more parallel to the x-axis as time grows large. Um, the path becomes more and more parallel to the x-axis. Mathematically, our equation shows that the y component of the velocity remains constant, while the x component grows linearly with t. Therefore, for when t is very large, the x component of the velocity will be much larger than the y component, suggesting that the velocity vector becomes more and more parallel to the x-axis. The magnitudes of both x sub f and y sub f, x final and y final, continue to grow with time, although x f grows much faster. All right, this ends our discussion of two-dimensional motion with constant acceleration. Uh, we will discuss section 4.3, the projectile motion, next.